I've been talking about we've been talking about relationships and we're going to continue uh, in that vein. Uh, I want to pray uh, the blessing of God over this word. Father, let this word penetrate the hearts of your people and bring life. We give you thanks and praise for it in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. I want you to turn with me in your Bibles, turn with me to the book of St. John, the 14th chapter. And uh, this is a very familiar scripture, but uh, it is, it is, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, use it as, as, as our first opening for this lesson that we're going to teach tonight. Uh, St. John 14, let's, let's, uh, we're going to start at the first verse. And it says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If I, if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. And then I, I want you to, to uh, go down with me to uh, verse number 16. And it reads like this. It says, and I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him for he dwells with you and shall be in you. Verse 18 says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Now, I want you to turn over also, turn over to, to, to St. John, the next chapter, chapter 15. Chapter 15, and we want to look at verse number 26. And it says, but when the comforter, when but when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. And then I want thank you. Please please mute your mute your mics, please. Uh, and then I want you to look at chapter 16, and I, and I want to uh, look at verse 5, and it says, but now I, now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of ye asketh me whether I goest thou, but because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and, of, and judgment, of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my father and ye see me no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them. Now, how be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever ye shall hear, he shall hear. That shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He, will, he shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. Now, I want to talk tonight about uh, a relationship, our relationship with the Holy Spirit, our relationship with the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us in Genesis, when uh, at the beginning of, beginning of creation, that the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters. It talks about, and then we we talked about the fact that that the relationship that Adam had with God in the garden. We talked about the relationship with God in the garden. And, and uh, 
but when we when we look in the New Testament, God sent His only begotten Son to redeem us from the fall of Adam, and and that relationship when He came, the Bible says uh, that He chose out twelve disciples, twelve in particular. Later on, uh, eleven of them were called apostles. Uh, well, all of them were called apostles. Uh, Judas lost his place, and of course, uh, Matthias replaced him. But the relationship that they had with Jesus was very unique. The Bible talks about that they traveled with him. They 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 uh, lived uh, uh, in in a in a uh, community together. Uh, Jesus walked with them, talked with them, taught them. Uh, he mentored them. Uh, he 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 uh, he opened up the word of God to them. Uh, so that relationship was very very powerful. It was very very intimate. It was very very uh, uh, close relationship that Jesus had with his disciples. But what I want to talk about is 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 this new relationship, because Jesus in chapter fourteen of Saint John is talking about the fact that he's going to leave, that he is going away. That uh, when he goes away, then he's saying that uh, when I go away uh, and and uh, uh, Thomas, uh, you know, said, uh, we don't know where you're going. And and uh, and and Jesus tells him uh, that uh, uh, that he is going to go away. But if they believe on him, that he that they would receive another comforter another like unto me verse 16 chapter 14 says and i will pray the father and he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever now we know praise god that jesus is speaking of the holy ghost in chapter uh, 7 of saint john Jesus at the great day of the feast said, uh, he that believeth on me as the scripture has said it, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. He spoke of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus is, is telling his disciples in chapter 14. He's telling them uh, in, in, uh, in chapter 15 that the world would hate them. But he goes on to say to them, that in verse 26 of chapter 15, he says, but when the comforter is come, whom I will send un unto you from the father, even the spirit of truth, that which proceeded from the father, he shall testify of me. He is talking about a new type of relationship. Now, many of us have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus. Most, all of us that believe have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus. And we are, and and all of us have received the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. We are baptized into the body of Christ. So the Spirit of God connects us and joins us into the body of Christ. But I want to tell you that the Holy Spirit is more than just an experience. He is a person that takes uh, on the responsibilities, the same as Jesus with the disciples. He walked with them. He taught them. He he uh, he demonstrated God to them, uh, and and so the Holy Spirit was given in Jesus' stead. And Jesus said, "I will not leave you comfortless. I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm not going to leave you by yourself." And I want to talk about this relationship because this relationship is so important. Many of us can relate to a relationship with, with the Father and relationship with Jesus. But Jesus said that the relationship that would replace the intimate relationship that he had with his disciples, his apostles, those that followed him, it would change, that there would be a new relationship, and that that relationship would be with the Holy Spirit. He is called the Comforter. He is called Paraclete. One called alongside to help. He is our helper. He is our guide. He is our, our uh, he, he is our, in fact, the, the um, in the, uh, if, if we look at this in um, the actual uh, Greek 
of St. John. Let me just do this right quick. St. John uh, 14. And uh, and let's look at, 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 at verse 26. And uh, we're going to look at it in the in the Strong's Concordance. And it and it says that this word, this word for the Holy Spirit or the comforter, which Jesus said is going to take my place. I'm going away, but I'm going to send you another comforter. I'm going to send you someone that will walk with you like I walked with my disciples. They will walk with you and they will he will train you. He will develop you. And, and, and I'll get into some of the things that he said he would provide, but it is the word paraclete. It is, it is translated an intercessor, a counselor, an advocate, a comforter. And so when we look at this, we see that this, the Holy Spirit is a counselor, a comforter. He is, he is um, one called alongside to help us. And uh, and so we need to we need to uh, to develop our relationship with the Holy Spirit. I know I have a relationship with Christ. It's Christ that I called on His name. I was born again. But there is we have to walk this life out. When we are born again, we have we have to. Uh, it is it is it is incumbent upon us to uh, to get in close relationship with the Holy Spirit. To walk through this life, we if um, the only way that 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 we don't need the Holy Ghost immediately is if we had gotten saved and died and immediately went to heaven. We got to walk this earth, and and so just as disciples walk this earth with Jesus, Jesus taught them how to pray. He taught them how to fast. He taught them how to love. Bible says that that the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. So he, so the Holy Ghost is our teacher. He's our advocate. He's 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 our friend. And this relationship needs to be cultivated. I want to I, I want to say that Jesus says that when he began to tell them that he was leaving in chapter sixteen, he said, uh, "You are getting sorrowful." In verse six, it says, "But because I have said these things unto you." Sorrow hath filled your heart. In other words, they walking with Jesus. Now, I want to say this is that is that many times we reminisce or we think, if I was back there with the disciples and I was walking with Jesus, my Lord, I oh, I, I would trade places every day of the week to be walking back there with Jesus. Listen to what Jesus said in verse number seven of chapter 16. Nevertheless, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Wow, that is, that is absolutely, that is certainly a one of the most powerful, powerful scriptures and 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 if and if, if Jesus wasn't saying it we probably wouldn't even believe it in in the in the in the amplified translation of chapter of uh, verse 7 it says however i am telling you nothing but the truth when i say it is profitable good expedient advantageous for you that i go away because if i do not go away the comforter the counselor, the helper, the advocate, the intercessor, the strengthener, the standby will not come to you into close fellowship with you. But if you, but if I go away, I will send him to you to be in close fellowship with you. So tonight, tonight I'm talking about your relationship with the Holy Spirit. In other words, I know you know Jesus, you love Jesus. The Holy Spirit is a gift that was given to us. It, it is the promise of the Father. It was released by the Son to the church. In Acts 2 and 4, it talks about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It talks about the fact that on the day of Pentecost, that they were all filled with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, spoke with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. 
this new relationship that was established on the day of Pentecost, the sending of the Holy Spirit into the lives of the church, into the lives of these individuals, these 120 individuals that went into the upper room were filled with the Holy Spirit of God. And now there is a new relationship. One of the things we need to we need to, to to realize is that we need to cultivate a relationship with the Holy Spirit. He is the one that is administrating and carrying out the will of God on the earth. And so we need more than, it's interesting to me that that many times when we even teach on the Holy Spirit, we teach on his gifts, we teach on his fruit. But many times we don't talk in terms of the intimate relationship that we are to develop with him. I like what, how the Amplified Translation says this. He says, how I'm telling you nothing but the truth when I say it's profitable. In other words, Jesus said, me going away is better for you. That tells me that, that, that the, the relationship with the Holy Spirit is so, so very important. Now, Jesus says in chapter 14, he said, the Holy Spirit is with you, but he shall be in you. So the Holy Spirit has an operation of the Holy Spirit within and the Holy Spirit upon. And so we need to understand that the intimacy of the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit is not only with us, but the Holy Spirit is also in us. The relationship is so much closer. Jesus could walk with them, but he could not jump into each and every one of them. He could not, he could, he, he, he was, had an intimate relationship with them, teaching them, training them, developing them. However, the Holy Spirit gives us even a deeper uh, relationship, even a closer relationship with the Father and with the Son through the Holy Ghost. In chapter 14, it talks about that it, he says that the Holy Spirit in in, in verse uh, number, number 16 in chapter 14, it says, and I will pray the Father, he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth them not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwell with you and shall be in you. How's your relationship with the Holy Ghost? How's your relationship with the Holy Spirit? That should be cultivated, not just ministering spiritual gift. It is a relationship of intimacy, of collaboration, of walking together. Look at what it says here in verse 18, chapter 14, St. John. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Do you know if the whole, the Holy Spirit is able to bring the things of the Father and the Son, the Father God, the Son, the Lord Jesus, and to bring them even closer and in greater view and revelation than we could get if we were back there walking with Jesus? Do you know that they walk with Jesus and still they had issues with understanding because there was because even though. They, we, Jesus could speak to their minds. Jesus could minister to their physical bodies, but their spirits, their spirits were 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 not born again. And, and it wasn't until Jesus rose from the dead and breathed on them and said, "Receive ye the Holy Ghost." Remember when he rose from the dead? The Bible says uh, that that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Before Jesus was raised from the dead, they could not be born again. They were born again when Jesus rose from the dead and walked through the wall and came in and said, and breathed on them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. That was the born again experience. They were born of the spirit at that moment. But Jesus told them to go to Jerusalem and wait until you be endued with power. Wait until the Holy Spirit fills you completely. Do you know that the Holy Spirit not only is your call alongside to help, but he is inside you to help. And when you begin to develop your relationship with the Holy Spirit, I, I, I do this often 
And this is a good way to do it. Many times we are talking to Jesus and that's nothing wrong with that. But Jesus said, in that day, you shall ask me nothing. You ask the father in my name. Jesus is telling us that in that day, the Holy Spirit in you, the Holy Spirit with you, that relationship is, is even more intimate, even more close, even more dynamic than you than if you had walked with him during the times of the disciples. And so what I do many times, and I do this almost every, uh, probably every day, because every uh, I'll say, Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, I'll speak to him. He is not a mist in the air. He is not some phantom. He is a person. He is living. He's walking with you, but he is in you. And you will find that the more that you yield yourself internally and externally to the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit will engage your conscience, your intuition, your communion, which is the three parts of your spirit, and will begin to engage them, you will find that there will be a new collaboration of you and the Holy Spirit. You can collaborate with the Holy Spirit. Do you know the, 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 the disciples did not just, just you know, uh, uh, do their thing. They collaborated with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you need to ask the Holy Spirit, what should I do, Holy Spirit, in this circumstance and in this situation? Give him a chance to collaborate with you. Don't make all your decisions and then say, Holy, then say, God bless it or Holy Spirit uh, empower it. Learn to talk to the Holy Spirit. Learn to collaborate, to counsel with the, he's a counselor. He will counsel you and he will let you know what to do. He's in you. He's here to help you. This relationship is very, very important. Don't get so excited about all of his gifts and you are not even taking consideration his person. That would be like, like uh, um, um, you know, somebody that's a uh, uh, husband or wife that, that uh, uh, loves their, their spouse for all the things that they do and not for who they are. The Holy Spirit is your intimate friend and you need to collaborate with him. There's a wonderful scripture that 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 uh, uh, in in Acts 15. Why don't we turn over there? I want to I want to uh, share this because because there we need to really collaborate with the Holy Spirit. We need to work. We need to work in conjunction with Him. The Bible says, "As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God." Indeed. And so, how are you led by the Spirit of God? Well, I, I, I'm led by the Spirit of God because uh, he said I was led. No, no, you talk to the Holy Spirit. You ask him questions. You ask for his guidance. You ask for his help. Now, in Acts 15, for just to understand the background of this, is that in Acts 15, they are adjudicating an issue that came up with 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 some of the Jews that were in the church in Jerusalem, and 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 uh, in fact, uh, and if you look at uh, Acts fifteen and verse five, it says, "But there arose a certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses." In other words, there was a controversy, and many of the Pharisees that had come to know the Lord Jesus Christ and born again they begin to feel like that the Gentiles coming into the kingdom of God needed to be circumcised and needed to keep the law of Moses. And, and this was adjudicated by the church in Jerusalem, by the elders of the church, by the apostles of the church, and especially by the chief apostle of the church, which was James, the brother of Jesus. Now, I'm not going to go into it. Most of you probably have, have read this, but but uh, they were dealing with, should they send out and tell the churches that were primarily Gentile churches to tell them, you've got to be circumcised and you've got to keep the law of Moses. Now, they came to the conclusion that it was not necessary. They came to the conclusion uh, in verse 22, it says, then pleased it the apostles and the elders 
with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch, Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas and surname Bar Bar uh, Barsabas. And then it says uh, in verse 24, for as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting their, your soul, saying you must be circumcised and keep the law in whom we gave no such commandment. And then he just says in verse 25, it seems good unto us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Saul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of the Lord Jesus. And then they sent to them two prophets. Uh, in verse 27 said, we have sent therefore Judas and Silas, the little prophets who shall tell you the same things by their mouth. Now listen to what it says here, because to me, this is something that many times we just read right over. It says in verse 28, for it seems good to the Holy Ghost and to us. Now, now in, 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 in other words, that we're going to give you the, the conclusion as to what, how we adjudicated, how we came up with it. We did not come up with this decision by ourselves. We didn't pick this out of the air. We didn't have a committee meeting and just all of a sudden come up with this. They said that it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us. You know what that tells me? That tells me that they consulted the Holy Spirit they had such a relationship with the Holy Spirit until he was in on their meeting. He was in on this council. How many times have we in really invited the Holy Spirit to be in on our meeting? How many times have we invited the Holy Spirit to be in on our discussion? How many times have we invited the Holy Spirit to be in on our marriage, in on our family, in on our child rear? In other words, many times we're we're, we're not even asking the Holy Spirit to help us. We're not even drawing from his wealth of wisdom. He is God, Holy Spirit. He is God, Holy Spirit. And so they say, it, it seemed good to the Holy Ghost. You notice they said Holy Ghost first. And to us. We need a relationship with the Holy Spirit that is so close until he is our most intimate and our uh, counselor. He is our best friend. <laughs> In other words, praise God, we do nothing without consulting the Holy Ghost. And when we consult the Holy Ghost, let me say, tell you, the Bible says that when he comes, and we'll talk about, uh, we'll talk about, I'm going to go to that also. But, we're, but when the Holy Ghost comes, he will not speak of himself but he will speak. I found this to be the case. That the more you talk to the Holy Spirit and develop your intimacy with the Holy Spirit, that there will be such, the Bible says that his spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are God's children. There will be such a unity of your spirit with the Holy Spirit until you will begin to think the thoughts of God. You begin your thoughts many times. What you you it'll no more no longer be well. You know I just thought that the Holy Spirit will bring all things to your remembrance. Your remembrance is your mind, is your thoughts. He will bring things to your remembrance. He'll get. He'll bring you thoughts. He'll lead and guide you. Now it's always according and in line with the Word of God, but He will lead you. He will guide you. I was uh, I was sharing with Sister Hogan. Uh, uh, it was, I was dealing with some, some business stuff and I was dealing with an individual and, uh, and, and, uh, so, uh, and I, and I was, and I was quite upset with this situation. And so I got up and, and it was at night. I mean, you know, I got up, I went down and I wrote down all of the stuff. I said, I'm calling a meeting. I told Sister Hogan, I'm calling a meeting. I'm going to do this. <laughs> I said, and I I came down to my office and wrote down all of the things I was going to, all of the things I was going to, this is an agenda. This, we're going to discuss this. 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 I'm going to talk about this, you know, and so on and so on. So, and I, I, I go to, I go, I, I finally, I go on up and I go to bed. And usually, Lord wakes me up. Usually, I'm up between about 3.30 and 5 o'clock. I'm usually, I'm, I'm usually woke and I'm on my knees 
and I'm before the Lord. And I'm before the Lord and I'm, and I'm saying to the Lord, you know, about this meeting. And I'm saying to the Holy Spirit, I need your help. You know, because, because you know, I, I, I'm i thinking that what I need to do is I need to, you know, for lack of a better term, not, uh, you know, is I need to read the riot act on these folks. You know, I don't, I don't know y'all, y'all don't know what that, I know mostly black folks know what I'm talking about. And, uh, and, and I, so I, I, I get up off my knees, I lay down, and I'm there, and all of a sudden, I'm, I, my thoughts begin to roll over in my spirit, and, and I know it's the Holy Spirit, and, and, and the Holy Spirit tells me, no, don't do that. The Holy Spirit says, now, now, and then the Holy Spirit tells me, and I'm thinking these thoughts, I know, see, I've learned this, that, that my spirit and the Holy Spirit collaborates together. And, and uh, uh, the Bible talks about that we have the mind of Christ. The Holy Spirit is what provides us with the mind of Christ. And, uh, and I'm thinking, and then all of a sudden, I, 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 the Holy Spirit is directing me, do this, do this. And, 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 and he said, don't, 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 don't call this meeting, don't call it. Tells me what to do. And it's, and, and, and uh, it's, it's not like just a, uh, a voice as much as it is thoughts. But I know they're the thoughts of the Holy Spirit. I know it was the Holy Spirit. So when I got up the next day, I was telling my, I was telling Sister Hogan, I said, I said, the, Holy, I said, the Spirit of God, Holy Spirit said, don't do. I said, I'm not going to do what I was going to do. Of course, she said, I was praying because she said, you was, I was getting, you know, I, you know, in other words, I'm railing, I'm railing in the room. She's, she's getting the brunt of it. <laughs> and she, I'm gonna do this, honey. I'm gonna do this, you know what? And so on and so forth. She said, I was praying for you. But what I'm what I'm getting at is this: is that what greater relationship than the relationship that Jesus said we would have with the Holy Spirit? He told his disciples, he said, I, I know y'all upset. He said, but it's expedient that I go, because when I go away, you're gonna be able to walk with me in a way that you have never been able to walk with me while I was on the earth. In fact, he said, there's some things that you can't understand that I can't even talk to you about. I, I gotta, you got to wait until the Holy Spirit come here because you ain't going to be able to understand these things. And so what he, what, he, what he was trying to get them to understand was, is that I'm going away, but it's going to be better than it would be if I was still walking here in the flesh. In other words, praise God, we, we connect spiritually. We connect to God in a in, on a on a higher level through the Holy Spirit, so we need to cultivate that relationship. It says that they did what seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to them. That's a good word for you to think about collaboration. When you get ready to make major decisions and all decisions, basically, the Bible says, uh, uh, "In all your ways acknowledge Him." And he will direct thy path. We most of the time think in terms of that, just, you know, maybe talking to Jesus. But if you collaborate with the Holy Spirit, he will direct you. He will give you what to do. He, it's amazing. I have, I, have, I have seen this over and over and over again in my life. Is, is that the Holy Spirit, when I, and especially when I ask him, especially when I say, Holy Spirit, I need your help in this. I need your help in this. And even things you don't understand in the scripture, you could say Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is the one that that wrote the scripture. The Bible says that the spirit that the word was breathed. Men were wrote as they, they were breathed upon by the Holy Spirit, the breath of God. And so many times we, we need to just sometimes we need to have a conversation with the Holy Spirit. And I do that often. Spirit of the Lord, what should I do in this situation? You know everything. You know all things. Guide me. Lord, I need your help. I don't understand this. And God will, will cause you to, 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 uh, to hear. Now, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't have time to, to go into you know, how the Holy Spirit speaks. 
because I and and but it is a good it is a uh, good to know that the Holy Spirit bears witness uh, with our spirit. You, you know, you know, you know what? That's that's the collaboration of the Holy Spirit. And so many times, what we're looking for, especially we as prophetic people, is we're looking for, you know, an audible voice. And sometimes it is a voice. And sometimes it's the voice of your spirit. But if Jesus has given you the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is in your spirit, your spirit can become a, 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 a very accurate and reliable guide the way the Holy Spirit speaks. Sometimes we are looking uh, for the spectacular and we're missing the supernatural because we want the fanfare. We want the bells and the whistles. We want, we want the fire and the thunder and the lightning. But how many remember when Elijah was in the cave? The Bible says that there was a storm, there, there was lightning there was there was all kinds of sounds and fire but the bible says that god wasn't in it god wasn't in all of the fanfare and sometimes if we're not careful we get we think that because of the the gifts and, and uh, the gifts of the holy spirit we we almost will do anything for the gifts of the holy spirit but but how many of us would give anything to walk intimately with the Holy Spirit, God, the Holy Spirit, to have his input in every decision that we make. Can you imagine having a counselor that knows the past, the present, the future, that is omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, knows everything, everywhere, at all times, all powerful, and and sometimes we don't even we don't even, we don't even ask him. The Holy Spirit just you know, and 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 we, and we think praise God that you know we, I'll ask him when I need him. Let me tell you something: you need him in every circumstance. You need him in every area. You need the Holy Spirit talking to you. You need to be having conversations with the Holy Spirit. In Acts 15 and 28, it sounds like that not only did they have council meetings with the elders, with the apostles, and the leaders of the Jerusalem church, but they were talking to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit many times doesn't speak in a voice. Remember when Paul was getting, Paul and, and, uh, uh, and uh, Silas was trying to figure out where they would go to minister. And the Bible said they tried to go one place, but the Holy Spirit forbade them. In other words, you could there, there can there can be a check in your spirit. You ask the Holy Spirit, and then all of a sudden, something on the inside of you say, no, 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 no. I I I, I use Sister Hogan and myself as an example. But Sister Hogan, just lately, she she was um uh, talking about doing something um uh, and um uh, uh, a particular thing, and and uh, and she kept getting a, a a a in her spirit, hold up, hold up, hold up, you know, and uh, and finally she just said to me, she said, you know what, I, I'm getting I'm getting this this check in my spirit. That's the Holy Spirit, and surely that was the correct decision. We 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 need the Holy Spirit more than we think. And sometimes in the most minute things, we just need to say, Holy Spirit, what about this? I've said it, so I've said it, if I've said it one time, I've said it hundreds of thousands of times over the last 50 years. Just Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, help me with this word. Holy Spirit, help me with my children. Holy Spirit, help me with my wife. Holy Spirit, help me, help me. I need your help. And it's amazing the help that we get. So the relationship that I want you to develop, I want you to start really cultivating that relationship even greater. And, and, and as you cultivate that relationship with the Holy Spirit, 
you're going to find that many of the decisions that maybe in the past you might have you might have made we all have made bad decisions but you're going to find that the holy spirit is going to help you now now don't don't try to don't ask the holy spirit and then if you don't get an answer in the in in the in what while you're praying or you don't get an answer right away that that you give up on hearing what the holy spirit has to say i have had the holy spirit speak to me many times i can be i can be just sitting down relaxed and all of a sudden the holy spirit will begin to bring something back to my remembrance because that's what he does he brings it back to my remembrance something that we were talking about and then he'll bring it back to my remembrance and then he'll begin to tell me and 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 you just have to you just have to go with you just have to work with God because he, he's not going to do everything just like you want it done, you know, and when you want it done. And and you need to take time when you take periods that you spend time with the Holy Spirit. Now, let me say this. One of the most wonderful things that God has ever given us is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It is an experience. That is not. That's not the Holy Spirit. That's an experience with the Holy Spirit. But that's not all. Of, that's not the the the, uh, the the entirety of the Holy Spirit. He gives us the ability to to speak in a heavenly language. And and what a heavenly language does is it allows us to contact our spirits. The Bible says, when a man prays in an unknown tongue, his spirit prays. His understanding is unfruitful. And so it gives us an opportunity to activate our spirits. And so when we activate our spirits, it 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 does uh, cause us to be more sensitive to the Holy Spirit, sensitive to his voice, sensitive to him. And, and we need to do that, praying in the Holy Spirit. And but 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 it not it should not be just to prophesy. Don't, you know, it it's one the, the Holy Spirit. Uh, get does not get his greatest pleasure out of the fact that you can heal the sick, that you have the gift of healing, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, discerning your spirit. He doesn't get as much out of that as 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 he gets out of the fact that you are walking with him. The Bible says that Jesus in Acts ten thirty eight it says how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power that went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. But listen, in, 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 in three of the Gospels, it talks about the fact that when John baptized Jesus, that he came straightway out of the water. Our Savior came straightway out of the water. This, this is Jesus in human form. He comes out of the water. The Bible says that the cloud descends over him and a dove and the voice of God says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And then the Bible says he was driven by the spirit into the wilderness. If Jesus needed the Holy Spirit to direct him into times of consecration, into 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 uh, preparing for his his ministry, then we need the Holy Spirit. Jesus was giving us an example. He was not doing what he did because he was God and he was God manifest in the flesh. What Jesus did, he did as a man anointed, led, directed by the Holy Spirit, and and that relationship. What made the disciples Christians in Antioch was that they did the, what Jesus did. They walked with the Holy Spirit. They, they ministered out of the power of the Holy Spirit, but their relationship with the Holy Spirit was very, very intimate. Paul, when they made decisions for ministry, the Bible says they, they just they wanted to go here, the Holy Spirit forbid them. They wanted to go there, the Holy Spirit forbid them. Now we know eventually they had a, Paul had a vision and there was a man in, um, uh, um, I can't remember the city now, but anyway, it says, "Come over and help us." And 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 he knew that the Holy Spirit was leading them. 
helper, comforter. Let me read this one more time and then, then I, I'm going to be done. But this is, I, I want to talk about, because this is a whole new relationship. You know, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. But, but you are not going to know Jesus in the depths that God wants you to know him without the Holy Spirit. You, you're going to be a loss. You're going to, you're going to, and, and, uh, and it's difficult for us to be victorious without the help of the Holy Spirit. But it's not just so we can prophesy or just so we can lay hands on the sick. The Holy Spirit wants to be involved in every area of our lives. Again, the Amplified Translation, chapter 16 of St. John 7. However, I am telling you, this is Jesus talking. I'm telling you nothing but the truth when I say it's it is profitable. You know, we should be, we have a better covenant. We should be moving in, in, a, in a greater way than even the disciples before the coming of the Holy Spirit on in them. Now the Holy Spirit was here, Holy Spirit's been here, but the Holy Spirit in them. But it says it's profitable, it's good, it's expedient, it's advantageous. You know, we are in a better place right now. I know some of you, boy, if I was walking with Jesus back then and Jesus was healing the sick and raising the dead, boy, I would, oh, praise the Lord. That's what I would, no, no. You know what you would, you would be, you would be dull of hearing. You would, be, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even know who you, you, you would, you would uh, question who Jesus was. You'll be just like the disciples because their revelation was limited to a, a physical, mental uh, revelation, a mental, well, I shouldn't say a mental revelation, but a men mental uh, understanding of who Jesus was. It's good, expedient, advantageous for you that I go away, because if I go not away, the counselor, the comforter, listen to what I said, counselor, you need to get counsel from the Holy Ghost, helper. You need help from the Holy Ghost. I know I need help from the Holy Ghost. I cannot make it without him. Advocate. That means you need him representing you. Representing you in the earth and representing you before the Father. Intercessor. The Bible says, talks about prayer. It says that we know not what to pray for as we are, but the Spirit makes intercessions for us with groanings and utterances that cannot be uttered in articulate speed. In other words, that they're too deep for words. That's why I say is the Holy Spirit ain't always speaking to you in words. Sometimes you just you you you, you have a groaning. You have you got to understand the language of the Spirit, and you don't learn the language of the Spirit unless you spend time with the Spirit, unless you engage Him, unless you talk to Him. Said the comforter, the counselor, the helper, the advocate, the intercessor, the strengthener. Our standby. He's right by our side. But the greatest thing is, is he's not just by our sides. He's in us. That's the difference. Before, Je before Jesus rose from the dead and they were born again, the Holy Spirit came upon them. But now, but now the spirit of God is in you. All you got to do is just look inside. Sometimes we're looking for, for, for we're looking for help outside when our help is on the inside. If we just if we just cultivate that 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 relationship, if we just cultivated it. Sometimes you're getting ready to do something. You're, you're getting ready. Uh, many times when you're getting ready to even minister, to ask Holy Spirit. How should I do this? Or what should, not just what I should do, how should I do it? And I'll tell you, he will begin to tell you. And let me tell you, your relationship with the Spirit of God will grow such in a way until you you you'll bypass a lot of, of people that 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 they might have more education than you. <laughs> they may, they may, uh, they may be, they may have more money than you. Uh, they 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 ingenuity but 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 the thing is is that you're drawing upon the wisdom of the holy spirit says a standby he said if i don't if because if i don't go 
the Holy Spirit, the comforter will not come to you. And then it says, and this is amplified translation, it will not come to you in close fellowship with you. When's the last time you fellowship with the Holy Spirit? When's the last time that you that you had uh, a sit down meal with the Holy Spirit? That's that's I, you know when we talk about fellowship, we talk about but that's the kind of relationship that Jesus said, y'all gonna be much better off than y'all is now. Cause you, you think y'all good now because I'm with y'all and I'm healing the sick, but you gonna, you are going to, you are gonna find yourself in a much better place because this is gonna be, it's gonna be in close fellowship with you. So I wanna, I wanna, I wanted, I, I wanted to, 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 um, to talk about this relationship we talked about it. it's a new relationship in the church in the new on the new covenant we have a new relationship with god and it's through the holy spirit jesus said he will take the things of mine and the father and he'll show them to you and i said well, if i'm doing the holy spirit what about the father let me tell you something he don't even talk about himself he doesn't even glorify himself it's all about, it's, it all brings glory, honor, and praise to the Father and to the Son. And then if you really want to be glorified, the Holy Spirit is what brings, what, what brings you to the place of being glorified. You know, the Bible talks about all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The glory is the estimation of what you should be in God. The Holy Spirit is the only one that can bring you back and shape you and cause you to, to walk. In the, in, in the level that God wants you to walk in. I'm gonna close with this. The old saints used to tell us, and they, they their emphasis was on the Holy Spirit and his ability to keep you walking in holiness. Most of you probably, most of you have probably, you know, heard that. <laughs> so, and that is true. The Holy Spirit can help you to live right. <laughs> it can, because he, is powerful, but but and that was their most of them, that was their emphasis. The Holy Spirit will keep you, but they didn't they didn't they didn't really 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 expound on the fact that he he could counsel you, that he could help you, and all of the things that he, that he provides the intercession, uh, you know the strengthening, and so all of that. The Holy Spirit is, and let me say this, and so much more. He's more. All the things that I've said that I've experienced with the Holy Spirit and things that you experience is so much more. So keep keep digging, keep going deeper and deeper in fellowship with Him. Go into the Word with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, I'm reading this scripture. Holy Spirit, give you know you you wrote this Bible. What is the revelation? What is what 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 do I need out of this word? And He'll do it because He's not only with you, but He's in you. Let's pray, Father. We do thank you and praise you, Lord God, because relationships are so very very important. But one, of, but the greatest relationship, the greatest relationship that that we can have is this new relationship with the Holy Spirit. He does everything that Jesus did and more. Jesus said, it's better for me to be away. And the reason was, is because he could only relate to them on a physical, external basis. But when the Holy Spirit comes, not only can he speak to you externally, but he will be in internally. And Father, we wanna walk in a new level of relationship and intimacy with the Holy Spirit. I ask you, oh God, that your people will begin to talk with the Holy Spirit. He's a person that they will have conversations with him, that they will collaborate with him, that we'll have a new level of what is good for the Holy Spirit and what is good to us. And through that, Father, that we're gonna find, Lord God, that we will walk in a new level of power, authority, because he brings the power of God. He said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And so, Lord, we thank you and we praise you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the promise of the Father. We thank you for the spirit of truth 
that lives with us and in us. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you for it and we glorify you. Lord, let this revelation touch us deep within and let it become a part of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We'll praise God for another Bible study talking about relationships. It's so important. You know, you don't, you, we're not an island. We don't live, uh, we don't live for ourselves. But this relationship is going to change your life. You watch. You watch. It's going to change your life. I know you talk to Jesus and I, I talk to Jesus, but the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit needs to become a very, very uh, active participant in our in our natural spiritual lives and when when he does you're going to find that things are he's going to give you some counsel that you couldn't have got from anybody else so god bless you have a wonderful wonderful evening looking forward to to a, another great time on on this this coming sunday i look forward to seeing you there and we're going to minister the word of god i uh, hope you you receive something tonight uh, that uh, will enrich your life. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. We love you. And good night in Jesus' name. Bless you.